Today we're going to be talking about how to find the volume of the solid that lies below the plane z equals xy, but above the triangle that's defined by the vertices 1, 1, 4, 1, and 1, 2. As a reminder, I've written the formula that we'll be using to find the volume, and I've also drawn a picture of the triangle with the given vertices. So you'll notice this triangle here with vertices at 1, 1, 4, 1, and 1, 2. I've also labeled this diagram by defining the equations of each of the lines connecting the three vertices, so all three sides of the triangle. This first side of the triangle here shown in green is defined, of course, by the line x equals 1. This lower side here of the triangle shown in teal is defined by the line y equals 1. And then the line shown in blue here, the hypotenuse of the triangle, is defined by either one of these equations. And this is an important part of our problem here. The line is defined by either the equation if we solve for y, y equals negative 1 third x plus 7 thirds, or by the equation if we solve for x, x equals 7 minus 3y. Now in a problem like this, we could choose to either integrate with respect to x first or with respect to y first. And sometimes, and in this particular problem, the order of integration should be dictated by whichever order is easier. In this case, the line x equals 1 and y equals 1 are simple. But these two lines here, the first one defined for y and the second one defined for x, we can clearly see that x is a simpler line to define. Because of that, we want to go ahead and integrate with respect to x first. So our integral for volume is going to look like this. Because we're going to integrate with respect to x first because this is simpler, then our inner integral is going to have our limits of integration with respect to x. That means our outer integral is going to have our limits of integration with respect to y. So the lowest possible value that y can attain in this region here is 1, right? It's this line here in teal, y equals 1. That is the lowest possible value that y can attain. The highest possible value it can attain is at this point right here, which is at the point y equals 2, this one right here. So we can go ahead and say that the upper limit of integration for y is 2. Now for x, we have our inner integral here with respect to x. The leftmost value x can attain is 1. We have this line here in green, the value x equals 1. We know that that's the leftmost value for x. The rightmost value for x is going to be dictated by this blue line here. So depending on which horizontal slice of our triangle we're taking, the upper limit of integration is going to change for x depending on where we are. So what we want to do is go ahead and plug in 7 minus 3y as our upper limit of integration for x. Then we want to take our equation z equals xy, we'll plug xy in here to our double integral, and then remember we're integrating with respect to x first, so we want dx on the inside, integrating with respect to y second, so we want dy on the outside. Now at this point, all we have to do is evaluate the integral. We're going to be integrating with respect to x first because dx is on the inside. When we integrate with respect to x, we treat x as the variable and y as the constant. So in this case here, x, y, x is our variable, y is like a constant coefficient on this x variable here. So what we're going to end up with is the integral from 1 to 2. When we take the integral of x, y, we'll get 1 half x squared y. That y is going to remain as a constant coefficient. We just use power rule to take the integral here of x. We're going to be evaluating this on the interval 1 to 7 minus 3y. I like to go ahead and write x equals 7 minus 3y and x equals 1. The reason being that I want to remember that I'm plugging, I'm going to be plugging in these values for x, not y. So I'll go ahead and put in my dy here. Now I can evaluate on my interval 1 to 7 minus 3y. So when I do that, I'll get volume is equal to the integral from 1 to 2. Here I'm plugging in 7 minus 3y for x. Remember, you always plug in your upper limit of integration first. So 7 minus 3y gets plugged in for x. I go ahead and leave the y there as it is. Then I subtract whatever I get when I plug in my lower limit of integration, which is 1. Well, if I just plug in 1 here for x, I'm going to get 1 half times 1 squared. That's still just 1 half. I'll just be left with 1 half y. So I'll get 1 half y here and then dy. Notice now all of our x's have been eliminated and we have only y's remaining. 
all we need to do is simplify this integral and then integrate with respect to y. So if I expand my quantity 7 minus 3y squared, I'll get 49 minus 42y plus 9y squared. That's what I get when I, when I multiply 7 minus 3y by 7 minus 3y. Then I've got a y out here and a minus 1 half y dy. I can go ahead and pull a 1 half out in front of the integral because our first term here is multiplied by 1 half and our second term is multiplied by 1 half. So we'll pull that out in front and get the integral from 1 to 2. Let's go ahead and distribute this y. Remember the 1 half here got pulled out in front. We'll just distribute the y across the rest of this and get 49y minus 42y squared plus 9y cubed. And then remember we pulled this one half out in front so we're just left with minus y dy. And at this point the only thing left to do is simplify our 49y minus y. We'll get the integral from 1 to 2 of now 48y when these two simplify with each other. Minus 42y squared plus 9y cubed dy. I can just use power rule to take the integral here and when I do I'll get y squared here, but then I want to divide by 2 since I changed the exponent to 2. So I'll end up with 24y squared. I want to add 1 to this exponent and make it 3. Then I need to divide 42 by 3. When I do that, I'll get 14, so minus 14y cubed. And then same thing here, I'm going to change this 3 to a 4, so I'll get plus 9 fourths y to the 4. And I'm going to be evaluating that on the interval 1 to 2. Now when I plug in 2 first, my upper limit of integration, I'll get 1 half times 2 squared is 4 times 24 is going to be 96. 2 cubed is 8. When I multiply that by 14, I get 112, so minus 112. 2 to the 4th is 16. That'll cancel with my 4 here, and I'll just be left with 9 times 4, which is going to give me a plus 36. And then I'll subtract whatever I get when I plug in 1. So I'll subtract when I plug in 1 here, I'll just get 24 minus 14 plus 9 fourths here when I plug in 1. If I simplify this and I get 1 half times 96 minus 112 plus 36 minus 24 plus 14, when I distribute this negative sign, I get 10 for that. And then I have a negative 9 fourths when I distribute this negative sign, so negative 9 fourths like that. Now if I simplify this, I'll get 1 half times, let's make this 40 fourths to get a common denominator. We multiply both numerator and denominator by 4. That way I can easily combine these fractions here. I'll get volume equals 1 half times 40 minus 9 is 31. So I'll get 31 over 4. And obviously when I multiply those two together, I'll get volume is equal to 31 over 8. And that's it. That's my final answer. This is the volume of the solid that lies below this z equals xy plane and above the triangle that we drew here. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.